Hello, what's the crack? What's the story? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing something so different. We're checking out the Bee Gees documentary, part one of 13. Let me know if you know some of this already or you're just finding this out. But this will be so good for me because I get to learn more about the Bee Gees. Let's go. Hi, I'm Morris Gibb. I'm Barry Gibb. And I'm Robin Gibb. And we're and the I'm, Bee Gees. And I'm Eddie Gibb. Okay. Woo! Woo! Do they change the face of music? One hit after the other. I love them. Wow. They're everlasting. Raw flavor. They're creative. Genius. I love it. Totally magic. I Woo. really like the Bee Gees. The well, Bee Gees now are icons. Do you know what's crazy? Like, I don't know most of these people's faces, but I know they're famous. I know they're big. I know they're big people. I know that. I know of no other creative family that's endured this long. You can't deny talent. They never really stopped having the hits. Ooh. And here they are, <laughs> the Bee Gees. We often thought we were triplets at one time because wow. we all had the ultimate goal of just singing together. I feel that what we've been doing all our lives has been our destiny. It's really about three brothers that always said Whoa. they were gonna be I'm sorry, but it's so weird seeing them talk. I'm so sorry, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna pause for a while now. But it's so weird seeing them talking and not singing. I'm so used to them singing every time, actually end up, you know, just seeing them talking, it's, it's, it's weird. Be famous. The story of the brothers Gibb is a roller coaster ride of triumph and tragedy, setbacks and comebacks. And during a career that has spanned more than 40 years, wow. they've repeatedly shown a unique ability to reinvent their sound and reconnect with audiences around the world. Their remarkable journey begins in 1944 in Manchester, England, with the marriage of drummer and bandleader Hugh Gibb to Barbara Pass. The next year, the Gibbs welcomed a baby girl, Leslie, and settled off the coast of Great Britain on the Isle of Man. On September 1st, 1946, Barry, the first Bee Gee, was born. He barely survived his childhood. I was very badly scolded when I was about two years old. Wow. He climbed on a chair and pulled the tablecloth towards him and I just made a big pot of tea. Pulled it all over himself. Oh, that's their mum. And uh, he was in hospital for three months. He was very, very ill. My mother tells me that it was about two years before I was back to normal again. Those two years, I don't remember. So uh, whatever happened to me was blanked out completely. Wow. He never spoke till he was three years old because of all the pain he'd gone through, you know. And I think that when those things happen to you in life, what you gain from it is incredible inner strength. Mm. It did make him stronger, more determined. I think that's what really helped us, you know, to make the pattern for his life. The Gibb family welcomed two more sons on mm. December 22, 1949, when twins Robin and Morris were born. They were neither identical in appearance well, nor disposition. Well, yeah, true, They've all, always had distinctive personalities. Morris was always very friendly, everybody's mate. Robin's always been a little bit withdrawn and into himself, but when they were together, it, they were... I think it's the other way around. Because now I feel like you know, when I see Robin perform, he's very active. And Maurice is just chilled. Well, okay, I'm learning something new, yeah? Uh, the same. I was Mr. Goody Goody. Mm -hmm. uh, I, was, I was so scared of doing anything wrong. I'm basically a very shy person. I have to really know somebody before Shy. I reveal myself, mm. uh, literally. Robin was a joyous kid. He, he was uh, hysterically funny. Mm -hmm. He'd always be in stitches, he'd always be laughing. This was the funniest kid you could ever meet. Mm -hmm. I like being spontaneous, I like being funny with people, I like being relaxed, but you won't get that right away with me. So. Robin always had the twinkle in his eye. And of Ooh. course, I think Morris did too. Don't forget they're twins, you know? So there was a spe specific, special way that they would play off each other that only twins would know. When you're identical twins, a lot of people will wear the same clothes. Even later on in life, in the teenage years, 
Robin and I differ in, in the fact that we're fraternal twins and we're not identical, but we have the same sense of humor. We have the same love of the same kind of music. Being a twin, uh, I don't think it's so much having much to do with the Bee Gees. I think we would have been the Bee Gees if we hadn't, even mm. if we hadn't been twins. I never thought of me and Morris as separate from Barry. I always saw the three of us as three equal brothers. By 1955, Hugh's band had broken up. So in search of new opportunities, he moved the family back to Manchester. In the glory days of the empire, Manchester was the world's cotton capital, one of the great industrial centers. Now, it was a working class city in decline. So too were the Gibb family fortunes. To support Barbara and the four kids, Hugh held down two jobs. Wow. The house was always filled with music. The boys were influenced by the Mills brothers and the Everly brothers. And by the time Barry was nine and the twins were six, they were already singing in three-part harmony. Wow. There was quite a number of times when my parents and my sister would come in the room and wonder if the radio was on when we were doing that. At the age of seven, I remember very clearly seeing on television a song and dance man. And I remember it hitting me in the head that that's what I'd like to do. And I would just pretend to do that. And it was, I, I'm looking over a four-leaf clover. So, <laughs> so I would do all this spot. stuff and I'd pretend to be the song and dance man. The real love of it is when I heard Wake Up Little Susie by the Everly Brothers. And I kept on playing it over and over again. And I kept on hearing these harmonies. Robin and I seem to have evolved into two different leads. And Morris is an expert. Harmonist, is that the right word? Mm -hmm. But he would always know where to put that other melody. Make, make that to make a three-part harmony. I think it was about a year after we, we, we first started it, having fun that we realized it was what we wanted, wanted to do for the rest of our lives. But we weren't sitting down making plans. Ooh. We were just kids having fun. There were. The Bee Gees musical career actually began at the movies. One day before the feature, a boy got up on stage and mimed to an Elvis Presley record. The brothers were inspired to try it themselves. We went to see the cinema manager and asked if we could get up one Saturday afternoon and do just what that mm. boy had done, you know? And uh, he said, okay, he said, I can't pay you anything. We said, you get paid? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Imagine. So we got the guitar and the records that we intended to mime to. And uh, on the way to the Gaumont Theater, we were running and Morris dropped the records. In those days, they broke, folks. We were very disappointed that we'd lost our chance and, but we persuaded the manager to allow us to go on and sing anyway. And we just did what we did at home. And the kids loved it. And I, God, I remember that feeling. It was great. And we had our first real audience rush, you know? And wow, this is what we want to do. Mm. We'd sit up all night talking about what, what we wanted to do in the future when we grow up. And we were talking about all the things we wanted to do. We wanted mm. to make records, we wanted to write, and uh, we didn't know where we were going. We used wow. to sort of daydream and night dream. And, <laughs> No, and uh, every other kind of dream, and we just talk about it day and night. Walking down the street in Manchester, I remember Barry saying that one day we're going to be really famous. And we said, oh, yeah, wow. yeah. whatever you say. He's the big brother, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a pact that we made in, in uh, Manchester, that this is where we were going and nowhere else, uh, that we were not going to detract from this path. We were going to be famous come hell or high water. And after the hell in the high water. <laughs> As pint-sized rock and rollers, Barry, Robin, and Morris performed frequently at local theaters. To adults in the 1950s, rock and roll was synonymous with trouble. And so were the brothers Gibb. Barry and Robin were terrorists. I mean, nothing stopped in their way. Now when I think back, I feel really bad for my parents. <laughs> because if I'd have been my parents, I would have been pulling my hair out, you know. Mm -hmm. And my father had little enough as it was. <laughs> Robin especially was very naughty. But he used to light fires all over the place. Wow. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You mean the flame? <laughs> <laughs> he used to set hedges on fire. He'd light fires under the bed. 
Yeah, I was a bit of a fire bug <laughs> when I was young. We lit a little fire in the field next to the house and it spread. And uh, it must have been in the middle of summer, but uh, uh, it was, it spread all over the place. Wow. Wow, that was so good. That was the first part. That was literally the first part. It was, uh, so I'm going to be doing this. I'll try to do at least maybe one every week, at least one every week. Let me know what you guys thought. What do you guys think about that? I think that was very, very interesting. I'm literally getting into it so much. I forgot I was reacting to it. But yeah, let me know if you actually like it so I can keep reacting to it. Yeah, thank you so much. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.